The Roush Active Catback here is gonna be a very unique system for the 2015 and newer five liter owners who wanna have the ability to control the volume of their exhaust on the fly, thanks to the included components. Now, prospective buyers can expect very nice 304 grade stainless throughout for the material, in addition to all of your hardware and wiring needed to get the system installed. Because there is a bit more involved with this system, the price is gonna be a bit higher compared to your traditional Roush system at right around 1800 bucks for the Active. While the install, on the other hand, will get a healthy two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter with a little bit more to come on that later in the video. So it's no secret that the Active exhaust stuff really has been all the rage lately, ever since getting introduced on cars like the Mustang and even Roush incorporating it onto their special edition F-150s. It gives you that luxury, right, of keeping things quiet in or around town or cranking up the volume whenever you wanna be heard. And that's exactly what you can expect from the Roush Active System that we have here. Now, if you guys are familiar with the Roush trucks or have seen my review of the supercharged Roush F-150, then you probably know the version of their exhaust that I'm talking about. It gives you a few different levels of tuning along with phone or app support. Now, I wanna be very clear, guys, and say that this is not that system. While very similar in sound, the system that we have here will simply include a two-way switch with the wiring that's simply going to allow you to fully open or fully close the included valve basically taking you from loud to quiet with really no in-between. So how does Roush achieve this and what does it mean for your volume levels? Well, with that valve fully cranked open, you are getting that raw Roush tone and plenty of volume. So going to my wake the neighbor scale, I'm gonna go soft four out of five here all day long with everything fully uncorked. However, with that valve closed, on the other hand, things really do remain pretty tame overall and that volume drops down dramatically. In fact, I'm gonna call it soft two out of five on the wake the neighbor scale in quiet mode. Now the tone inside the truck does change slightly from quiet to loud, and it's pretty much what you'd expect, right? Fully open, you're hearing things a little bit more inside the cab, but still relatively drone free overall, which is always a nice thing to point out. But switching gears, let's get into a little bit more detail here about build, materials, all that good stuff. And again, the two stars of the Roush system will be the Roush muffler itself, working in conjunction with your included active valve. Now this guy is mounted by the way before the muffler itself and when that valve is fully closed, everything will divert through the one side of the muffler here, keeping things relatively tame. However, open that valve up and the exhaust will travel through the path of least resistance and at that point things do get noticeably louder. Now the valve itself is controlled by the included wiring here again and that switch that does get mounted inside the cab and allows for easy changes on the fly whenever you want. Now outside of that guys, it's all trademark Roush here. Killer 304 grade stainless steel throughout, including the very unique combination of two and a half and three inch mandrel vent tubing, all exiting out your twin four inch slash cut tips etched with the Roush logos. Now, aside from that, expect all of the brand new clamps, wiring as we already pointed out, and yes, even zip ties to handle the installation. Speaking of which, now we're gonna show you the process of installing Roush's active cat back onto your F-150, which, as you might imagine, is gonna be a bit more involved than your traditional cat back, thanks to adding the wiring switch and all that good stuff. But to give you a better idea of how the job will go down, here's our detailed walkthrough along with a quick tool breakdown. Tools used for this install are impact gun or ratchet, a drill and step bit, reciprocating body saw, a center punch, 21 millimeter wrench, interior panel removal tool, plastic interior panel removal tool, wire depinning tool, needle nose pliers, diagonal cutters, 24 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, 7 millimeter socket, a wire fishing tool, a pry bar, a tape measure, and a dead blow hammer. 
So the first step of this install is going to be getting your vehicle safely supported either on a lift or jack stand so that you can properly remove the factory exhaust system to make room for your new one. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by separating the muffler section from the resonator and inlet pipe section because we are going to be reusing a part of this inlet pipe for the new system. So I'm going to take some rust penetrant and I'm going to spray this slip joint here before the flex bellow and I'm going to remove the back of the muffler from the truck. Now I'll take my 15 millimeter socket on an impact gun and I'll loosen up the clamp and slide everything apart. So because this slip joint's a little bit rusty, I'm also going to spray my hangers with some penetrant and I'm going to give the hanger rod a little tap with a hammer to get the slip joint to slide back and then I'll separate the muffler and drop it out of the truck. Now that I've got everything moving nicely, I'm going to take a 10 millimeter socket and unbolt the rear hanger in front of the muffler here. And then I'm going to use a pry bar to push the muffler section back out of the rubber hangers and remove it from the truck. I've got the help of a friend in the back and I'm just going to pull this muffler back out of the hangers and remove it from the truck. So my next step is actually going to be removing the resonator and inlet pipe as I'm going to have to cut it to size to fit my new muffler assembly. It'll just be easier to do off the car and it'll also be easier for me to show you. So I'm going to use a little bit of penetrant, loosen up the two bolts and then I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the resonator out. So the next step is actually going to be dependent on the wheelbase of your vehicle and for ours we measured from center cap to center cap to get a 145 inch wheelbase which makes this cut have to be at 14.4 inches from this flange here. So I'll just measure out 14.4 inches, I'll make a mark and now I can make my cut. So there is a little bit of assembly that is required for this muffler. You have to install the valve and assemble the new Y-pipe to the factory resonator. So the first thing I'm going to do is install my supplied gasket and my supplied valve onto the muffler here on the smaller port. I'm going to make sure that my orientation of my valve is up. I'll slide that into place and I'll use the supplied hardware to tighten it down. Now I'll just take a 13 millimeter socket and tighten up these nuts. Once I have those installed, I can slide my Y pipe into place. I have my clamps pre-installed here so that once I slide it in, I can put my clamps on and snug them down. And now I'm just going to snug the clamps with a 15 millimeter socket. So now I'm ready to install my factory resonator to my new muffler assembly. I'm going to make sure that I put this weep hole down facing the bottom so that any condensation that builds up inside the resonator can drain out. I made a small mark here just so I know how far I have to slide this into place and I don't want to go past the reduction here in the pipe. So I'll just slide this into my line and then I can snug up my clamp. So 
So now before I throw this whole thing into the truck, I'm gonna pre-install my provided hanger and then I'll bolt everything into place once I have the rear hanger for the muffler. This hanger that I left on the truck earlier in the install is no longer going to be needed as our new muffler assembly does not have the secondary hanger. So I'm gonna use my 10 millimeter socket on my impact gun and remove the bolts and pull the hanger off. So now I'm gonna throw this muffler assembly up into the truck. I'm just gonna install the hanger rods into the rubber hangers on the truck and then I'll bolt down the flange at the front. So with my muffler supported in the middle there, I'm gonna use the factory hardware that I removed earlier and I'm gonna bolt in the provided hanger. Then I'll just take my 10 millimeter socket and tighten it down. Now that I have my muffler assembly in, I can bolt up my two bolt flange here at the cat and then I'll use my 13 millimeter socket to tighten those bolts down. So in preparation for installing our two tail pipes off of the muffler, I actually have to loosen up one of the leaf spring shackle bolts here on the passenger side. I'm gonna use a 24 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna loosen up the bolt, but I'm not gonna remove it all the way. I'm just gonna back the head of the bolt out just far enough that I can slide in a new hanger that's got a slotted bolt hole, and then I'll tighten everything down once I have everything in place. So I have the clamp for this pipe pre-installed on the muffler there and when I get this slipped into place I'll just slide the clamp on over the slip joint and I'll tighten it down when I have everything ready to go. But I'll just slide this hanger rod through my rear hanger here in the back and line up the pipe. So now I can pre-install the provided new hanger that they've given me in the kit. And this is gonna slide into place on that bolt that I just loosened up. Once again, I have my clamp pre-installed on my muffler and I'll just slide the pipe into place and then put my clamp where it needs to go. Once again, I have the clamp pre-installed on the muffler and once I put the slip joints together, I'll put the clamp in place and tighten it down when I'm ready. So now that I have the tip hanger just snugged into place, I'm just going to snug the bolt a little bit more and then when I have the vehicle back down and the leaf spring shackle back up in its full resting position, then I will fully tighten it down. At this point, I can start tightening up some of my clamps just enough to hold everything in place while I make the adjustments on the exhaust pipes to get everything fitted and, and sitting where I want it to, but not too tight that I can't move things around if I need to. I'll use my 15 millimeter socket on an impact gun and I'll just snug the clamps down. So the kit provides you with a tip spacer that's supposed to slide onto the clamps. And so what I'll do is I'll put the slotted hole into the clamp bolt like that. And then I'll slide the other side of the slotted hole into the other clamp just like that. Now I'll throw these into place and then I'll install my tips.
Now I'm gonna take my 15 mil socket and tighten up my clamps once I get them aligned. All right, now that I have my pipes positioned the way I want to, I can take my 15 millimeter socket on my impact gun and go through and start tightening up all my clamps fully so that nothing moves. With the full weight of the vehicle now down on the suspension, I can go back and tighten up the leaf spring shackle bolt with my 24 millimeter socket and 21 millimeter wrench. So we're now onto the wiring portion of this installation, which has us on the inside of the vehicle. What we're gonna have to do is remove the shifter and cup holder bezel, as well as the center console here in the front. And what I'm gonna use is a little panel tool and a seven millimeter socket, but I'm gonna have to put the vehicle into neutral first so that I can get this uh, bezel out of the way. And then once I have it removed, I can put it back into park and keep moving on. Next, I'm gonna use my clip tool to pry up on this upper portion of the dash here, but I don't need to fully remove it. I just need to gain access to the center console part. And that's gonna reveal these two seven millimeter screws that I need to remove. Now I just need to remove this trim bezel here. If I can get it to pop free. Right up on the edge. There it goes. And then this can just hang down out of the way. Next, I need to remove this vent trim bezel that has the 12 volt and the 110 plug here, and then I'll unplug those and set this aside. Now I can unplug my connectors and set this off to the side. Next, I'm gonna use one of my panel tools here to remove the clips that I can see for the front of this little trim panel that's underneath the glove box, and then I will pull the whole panel out from underneath. So next, I'm gonna take the provided wiring harness. I'm gonna find the connector that has the yellow wires coming off of it, and I'm gonna to have to fish it up through the dash and pull it out through the hole that I just unplugged my 110 and my 12 volt outlets. Um, I have a little claw tool here that'll help me fish this through the dash, but if you don't have one of these, a coat hanger will suffice. So the next thing I need to do for this is de-pin this 12 volt accessory plug. And what I'll need to do is remove this red locking tab and then pull the wire pin out for the back of this purple wire with a blue tracer, green tracer. 
And I have some de-pinning tools here that I'll use to remove this stuff, but if you don't have the de-pinning tools, then a small paper clip or a small pick will also get the job done. Just wanna be very careful when you pry up on these so that you don't break the connector. And just get the red lock tab to release. And then once it's released, you can get it to come out completely. Make sure to set this off somewhere where you're not gonna lose it because you will have to put it back together. With that wire removed, now you can take the yellow wire from the provided harness and insert it into the spot that you just removed the purple wire. And it should look something like that. Now you can take the wire that you previously removed and insert it into the provided connector that they give you in the kit and make sure that you have the wire going into the position that it is going to engage into the other connector on the other side of this plug. There we go. Now I'm just gonna reinstall my red locking tab that I removed earlier. Now I can plug my connectors together and secure the red lock tab here. So we decided that we are gonna mount our switch here in the center console next to the shifter. Um, in order to wrap my wiring harness, I'm actually gonna pull this side panel off run my wires up where they need to go. I might have to pull a few screws or clips to get this out of my way so I can wrap my harness properly. But once we get that going, it'll just be a matter of drilling a hole and mounting the switch. And then our switch is gonna mount right here. So we're gonna be mounting our switch for the active exhaust here in the center console on this trim bezel for the shifter and the cup holder. Uh, I made a small mark here just in this little area in the back and I'm gonna drill a hole out to 20 millimeters and that will fit our switch. So I'll make my mark, I'll drill my hole and then I can mount the switch up. So now I need to make a small clearance notch in the underlayment of the plastic for the trim bezel that I just put my switch into. So I'm gonna drill a small hole and then cut my notch with a body saw or a razor blade. When you do this, make sure that there are no wire harnesses or anything electrical behind your drill bit so that you don't puncture anything when you make your hole. So now I've got to get access to my interior fuse panel. I'm going to pull my floor mat out of the way and then I'm going to pull this kick panel off and get access to my fuses. And there they are. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove my door sill panel and I'm also gonna remove the trim that goes around the fuse panel. 
Um, this is going to give me access to route my wires to get to the underside of the vehicle to make all my connections for my active exhaust. And since this one panel that I was removing earlier is in my way, I'm just gonna unplug my connector and remove it. So now that I've got access to my fuse panel, I'm gonna pull out the five amp fuse in location 35. I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers and very gently pull it out. And then I can take that fuse and insert it into the fuse tap that's in the harness and then I can reinstall the fuse tap into location 35. So now that I have my connections made at my fuse panel, I have to route my wire harness for my exhaust controller along the body harness here on the sill plate. So I'm gonna pull my B pillar sill plate out, my C pillar sill plate out, as well as some of the backing in the, the back of the vehicle and run my wire harness. Next, I gotta remove my floor jack here from the rear, and then I'm gonna pull this back panel down for the wall. So now that I have all of my trim panels removed, I can start routing my wire harness. I'm just gonna run it along this body harness that runs from the front of the cab all the way to the rear. I'm going to use this body harness to zip tie our new harness to, and then I will mount up my relay, my ground, and pass my controller wire all the way through to the underside of the cab. Okay, so there is a ground wire that I'm gonna have to unbolt here in the rear, and I'm actually going to use that ground hole for the mounting of the ground strap for the wire harness for the controller. I'm gonna use an eight mil socket to remove the bolt. And then I can install my ground strap right to that. Now once I have that mounted, I can take my controller switch, my controller plug, and pass that through my vent here at the back of the vehicle, and feed that down to the lower side of the cab where I can connect it to the exhaust. I'm also gonna have to mount my relay with a zip tie here in the back of the cab, and then I'll cover it with the rear panel cover once I put everything back together. So now that I have the wire fished down between the cab and the bed, I can plug it into my exhaust valve controller and test my system. So I just tested my system to make sure everything works before I put everything back together. So now I'm gonna start putting all my trim panels back in, and while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna zip tie all my wires into place. So now I'm just gonna mount up my relay and zip tie my wires while I put together all my interior trim panels.
So there's some factory zip ties here along this channel for the wire harness for the body. I'm just gonna snip these zip ties and add new ones and tie my new harness to my body harness and clean everything up when I put the panels back in. new trail. And that's going to wrap up this review and install of the Roush Active dual exhaust system with same side exit fitting your 15 to 20 F-150 5 liter. Thanks for watching and for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.